So first thing we're going to do is a straight foot lock. Let's do right here. And so first I want to work hand positioning because there's so much that goes into it. People tend to get really confused and they're, they're too worried about the legs or they're worried about the hand position and then they get totally confused. So I'm just going to work on the, the foot. Nothing else. Don't worry about what I'm doing with the legs here. I just want you to see what I'm doing with my arm. So this is gonna be parallel to the ground. So I don't want to be here where the arm is slanted down. And I don't want it here where the arm is slanted up, right? It needs to be flat, like the ground, okay? Level. The weapon that we always use is gonna be this bone on the wrist, right? The radial bone. Uh, the point of pressure is gonna be here on the Achilles, okay? So that bone has to line up on the Achilles, but this isn't right. Why is it not right? The forearm is not flat. I need to be here, right? I need the forearm parallel to the ground, wrist bone on the Achilles, okay? So once we got that, the next thing I wanna make sure is that my uh, muscle here, the pectoral muscle of the armpit is right above these knuckles here. I'm not trying to do this, right? Wrap it up, scoop it, where there's no space. That's not what's happening here. What's happening is that. It's very shallow. So if you can see there's some space here. Uh, I can see the mat behind me through this uh, space between my elbow and her ankle. She's already kind of lifting her hips up. Um, my bone is in the Achilles, and then my armpit pectoral muscle is just above the knuckles of the toe. So this bridge of her foot is visible, okay? This hand is reaching over, and I'm grabbing my own wrist. So you see my hand can wiggle? Because I'm not holding my hand, right? If I was holding my hand, I can't wiggle it, and now my wrist is taking all the pressure. I don't want that. I want my supporting arm to help the wrist go into her Achilles, right? So I have my grip, this is coming under and it's grabbing my uh, own wrist to help lift, right? And so we have this bridging and looking up even with my eyes motion and she already tapped. I have nothing here isolating the legs yet. So technically it shouldn't be tapping her yet, but there is a lot of pressure there and she's already feeling it. And obviously she could defend because I'm not locked in and everything. She's letting me do it. Um, so let's work just that for right now, the position of the arms and the hands. And uh, then we'll go into the leg position. <laughs> Can't hear you. No love, I do. He has no, no bear paws. Can I give you a foot massage? Can I give you a foot massage? <laughs> it's a massage, right? It's a massage, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah massage. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Get the bear. She's not falling. She's not falling for it. Yeah. Right? Oh, your bear don't have foot. <laughs> Probably don't have feet. So um, I see his foot behind you, which means it's very deep. It needs to be very shallow. The front of your pectoral muscle has to be over the knuckles of the toe. So I shouldn't be able to see his foot at all. So yeah. basically in the armpit, right? Right. It should feel like it's going to slip out. Right. I feel like on the... Yeah. Gonna, the way I do the ankle lock, you're going to feel... One of, one of two, if not both things, which is the Achilles and then also the ankle. You're gonna, it actually is gonna target both the way that I do it. See, but your arm's not parallel. You want your arm, this arm to be parallel to the foot. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's just weird because it feels like it's gonna slip out. No, 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 you're, 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 Move 
You have my ankle bone more than anything. You don't even have the Achilles for it. Really? There. Looks, it looks like it's hurting you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's hurting, but it. So it's. I'm looking for the pain in the ankle bone and the Achilles. Is that correct? Uh, right now, you sh you might not even feel any pain because it is. Um, it's not proper position yet. We're just looking for everything to line up the way that I showed. Right. So, so the forearm should be parallel. And you say the foot, don't drive the foot too deep, kind of make it. Right. Straight. It should be very parallel. Yeah. So really the toe, the big toe should be in, which I'll do it again. The way I'm sensing it is that big toe is in the armpit. Yeah. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So now the, the leg positioning. So the leg positioning we're going to use is uh, Ashigarami. My shin is here, right in the middle. Okay. My foot's kind of tucked under. Okay. And then this foot is going to go over the hip with my toes out. And this, this and this are isolating the leg and keeping her from getting on top. So it's very important that I squeeze these together, okay? And if she was to try to like drag her leg out, like try to stand in base, I'm attached to her, right? There's not, that's not gonna happen. And she won't be able to get up over my shin, right? This is all keeping her. What's that? Your other knee is tucked in under her leg. Right, it's pressing to her leg? There's, yeah, there's, we're squeezing here. Okay. Pushing our stomach with his heel. He's not really pushing, because that would be a push. I'm just Placing. keeping Placing. it. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about the foot right now. Let's work on this position. So without her leg, looks like that. My shin's in the middle, foot's tucked under, this is over the heel, and then I'm squeezing my knees together. It's like a 90s R&B album cover. It's like a supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so this leg is here. You should, you need to be in a little bit closer. So you're, yeah. And then your foot can go over the leg a little more. And then squeeze your knees together. Yeah. Here, right? I'm on that heel, my bed. This one, this, mm -hmm. and then that one underneath your armpit. And then same thing. You got to scoot a lot closer. Yeah. Bring this closer. This is what's going to keep me from stepping up where you. Right. Right. So you want that toe kind of pointing. Here in the hip, I mean, away from me, correct? Yeah. The, the reason for that's kind of um, twofold. One is hiding the heel, right? For any chance that they're going to reverse it and get the heel on you. Uh, and then, but the main thing is it's given the image that you're not reaping the leg, the knee. So in uh, IBJJF tournaments or rules that use, uh, tournaments that use that rule set, this foot is not supposed to pass her, her hip line here. So I can't have any more pressure on the knee. When the foot comes across, it, it's pushing her knee, it's dangerous, right? Like everything we do is dangerous. But if I put my feet, toes pointing out, okay, if I just turn my foot, that looks like a reef. 
But if I put my toes over here, no longer looks like a reef, right? That's the only difference really is image here, right? Because if I just pull my knee this way, I'm putting inward pressure on the knee, right? And I can't do that. So this looks really bad. That's super bad, right? So having the toes out and laying on this side makes it um, look a lot less bad, but it's also not illegal. So that's the main idea is that we're not doing an illegal leg entanglement, right? So my toes are out so I don't accidentally reap the leg. That's the main thing you're trying to do here, okay? Um, so now let's combine that. Notice something I do every once in a while here to put Reed in the right spot. If, if she's not close enough to me or I'm, I can't get close enough, I'll come under here and drag, right? So it's a good way to bring her in closer, okay? Without losing the leg or the position. Now, I'm gonna set my um, arms in that position I was talking about. So this bone comes to the Achilles, my armpit over the toes. This position's good because then I can slide right to my grip. Sorry. Okay, so I can go from here, pulling her in, to here. The whole time, my leg's up here. Right, I'm gonna go down to my elbow. She's already ready to tap. So I'm gonna do this without her foot. Okay. So we're here. I drop to the front of my shoulder, and this is where a lot of people will tap. Okay. Now, I tuck my elbow against my ribs, I look at the mat, and then I arch. Oh, you, yeah, you wouldn't tear the foot apart. Yeah, you wouldn't even get to that point. You would never get to Yeah, especially with my old ass. <laughs> elbow. I'm gonna go to the front of my shoulder. She's already gonna tap. Boom. Elbow's tight to my rib, look at the mat, so let's try. That would be bad. <laughs> Same leg position, get really close. I see, back, I see his foot behind you. You got to make a little bit more shallow grip. Yeah. I would. I'm not even going to be able to put my head on that. Yet. I know. <laughs> yeah. But don't try to put your head down because that would be the wrong motion anyway. What I'm doing is I'm pulling my elbow back. So I want to get the front of my shoulder on the mat. I do that by pulling my elbow behind me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Wait, you see? Do that again. There's no way. Right? Then I look. Then I arch. So you're, you're basically tucking the elbow back, right? Say again. You're tucking the elbow back, right? Or the kind of Correct. The back? Yeah, you don't want to go forward. You want to pull your elbow backwards. Yeah. Keep doing that. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that's an important factor, right? A lot of people you see with the ankle locks, they're both holding each other's ankles. They're arching, you know, they're rolling, they're doing all kinds of stuff and nobody's tapping is because they're missing some key components. They're just desperate right. to jump for the leg lock and they're not making sure they have a good position, right? The position, yeah, what, what I, position's everything. Yeah, what I've heard is that if you roll the shoulder back, it helps. Yeah. yeah, rolling the shoulder back, when I bring my elbow back, it makes my shoulder go back. Yeah. Right. So I 
Did you really feel it that? Oh yeah, I felt it. I felt it. No doubt. Did you feel it here? Yeah, yeah. There in the top two, it started to pull the bridge. The bridge. Yeah, because when you were when you were doing this work here, your bridge was here. You didn't go. You good on that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So the reality is it happens a lot sooner, right, than when you finish. Unless it's a world tournament, you know, guys, uh, or a high level tournament, the guys aren't usually willing to risk their foot breaking, right? And so you're going to not have to go through the entire motion, and you'll usually get the cap way ahead of time. Um, Let's talk about uh, defense. So the defense here, as soon as uh, your foot is already in the armpit, she should be thinking about escaping it, right? First of all, it shouldn't be in the armpit. It's like someone grabs my tricep, I'm thinking armbar's coming, I'm gonna defend the armbar. She's hiding her feet, right? So you don't wanna, like with an open guard or anything, your, it shouldn't be habit that your foot ends up in the armpit. Always have it out, right? I'm usually putting it on the hip, something like that, right. you know. Um, a lot of people think because I take the foot off my hip, they think I'm going for a leg lock, when really I'm just trying to keep the foot off my hip, right? Because you're trained not to let the foot go in the armpit. So uh, as soon as I get her leg, do this one, her leg like in my armpit here, She's not, probably not gonna get it out because I have good grip here already. I have a lot of points of control and I'm about to set up my leg position. So uh, maybe I did this from standing, right? And I'm here, boom, and I sit. She needs to start getting up. So she's gonna, first thing, no, that's next. First thing she should do when this ends up here is grab my neck, get some type of upper body control and my elbow, right? So when I sit down, she can just pop up. And you're not popping right? As soon as I get there, she should get some, go the other way. Yes. Yeah, right? It don't matter. And, uh, all right. So she brought up a good point. You guys need to be practicing all these moves, left side and right side, because when I grabbed the foot, she was grabbing my neck. And this, this one. The neck with this hand and my elbow with the other hand, which this elbow is doing absolutely nothing to her ankle. This is the one that's going to ankle lock her, right? So because she's right handed, she's grabbing my neck with the right and my arm with the left, but that's not going to do anything, right? That's not going to defend this, right? She pulls this elbow, now she can defend her foot. Right? So you can't have, you can have a good side, but you can't not practice your bad side, right? Because you're gonna end up in a situation where I choose what move I'm doing, you don't get to choose if it's left side or right side, right? So you have to be able to do everything from both sides. Um, so she's just sitting up or using my momentum as I sit to help her get up on top. Remember, this shin is going to be in your way, so your butt has to come off the mat, right? If I'm here, her butt has to come up so she can get over that leg. Otherwise, it's going to be in the way. And you have to do it before the foot goes on your hip, or you're not going to be able to get your butt up either. All right, so let's try that one, and then we'll go into what happens if they got in that position. Go ahead, Arsenio. Hey, real quick, yeah, uh, backing up. Because something that you just said was uh, getting the leg and then getting your feet into position. Is that the order of doing the leg lock? Yeah, so if I'm gonna go for a leg lock on her, so we're here, I'm trying to pass her guard. I'm gonna 
Here, and then I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna get this, right? Maybe okay. I go here, that's fine. Waiting for the camera to catch up. But I might just go here and sit, right? And you see how quick that is. She's not necessarily gonna be able to do this defense. I could go here and same thing, right? So I'm well, getting some type of grip on her leg. Whether it's my final grip or not, I don't know. But I'm getting some type of setup on the leg before I sit. Now, during so, a scramble, does it happen to where, like I said, you just feel like, hey, your feet got in that position, and then you then you grab the leg? Or uh, you're going to hopefully recognize the position after a while. The leg, that, the, the leg hey, first. Every time they wrap around my leg and start to sit, that's, that's some type of ankle lock. Right. Right. I need to get up and start defending. Get some weight. You need weight on the foot they're attacking. Uh, Is there, it seems like, and I would imagine I'm doing something wrong because it seems like I run the risk of getting caught in his half part as I'm rolling up. As long as you're not getting leg lap, that's the idea. So as long as you're on top, but you shouldn't be stuck in a half guard because they're holding your foot outside of, your, of their guard. Right. So I want to get the other foot on the outside. <laughs> So I want to get, I want to get here. Switching right? Yeah, switch yeah. your hands. You want to get to mount when he gets, there you go, and sit, right? Yeah. So, so it's the, it seems like the urgent point is the point of no return, basically. Is if I'm here, I need to grab quick. Yeah. See, that might that probably wasn't quick enough. Quick enough, right? Right. So, so, so I have to. Yeah. See, right here, it's not quick enough. Because you're doing it after he starts to sit, so you have to recognize the when someone's doing a certain move, right? In this case, it's the ankle lock. Immediately have your grips, right? Yeah, that would be better. Yeah. And part of the problem is this here. So if I'm with Rita, you missed this because you were starting to move. Um, and she's playing guard. You see the position she's in right now, right? And with Arsenio, I was just talking about if I was about to pass, I get her like that, right? You see she sits up again, right? And every time I do this, I'm doing that so I can pass her guard really easy. But she's sitting up, right? Right now, she can get many grips on me, okay? She's like this, how many grips does she have on me, right? Because I got her laying down. So your guard can't be laying down. So when you do this move, obviously they're putting you here, right? But she's already trying to sit up, right, and get her grips. So you always have to be actively trying to be in a good position and get your grips, even when you're drilling. You have to, uh, you can't be like, uh, Amazing. Wait out. yeah, you just can't chill out and, and wait too long. You have to, we're not defending each other, right? But you want to have some realistic motion in place. I right. want to be, no, no, basically no lower than this position. Right, and he's going to put you there to get your foot, and then you should be, uh, sitting back up slowly. Yeah, right. yeah, you want to resemble what you would really be doing, right? Without actually defending each other. So that's an art in itself, right? Is being a good uki or dummy, right? Uh, we have to know how to uh, let the person do the move without resisting them, but without helping them either, right? 
there's there's uh when i show the move in class there's i usually pick certain people like i like to pick i could i would pick everybody if i could right but there's certain people that are difficult to show the move on uh because some of them defend the move right maybe they're scared they're gonna get hurt they're unsure i don't know but or maybe it's just instinct they they defend the move while i'm trying to show it uh if i was doing it for real they wouldn't be able to defend right but because i'm going through slow you know and and piece by piece i'm describing the move in details then that person defending it becomes um frustrating to show the move because they're defending every single piece and i'm going super slow and they're defending it right and it's like no that's not the pace we're going right now right and then on the other hand when someone helps you do the move uh people aren't seeing a realistic again someone's going too easy for you right they're actually helping you on a throw for example helping you throw them like no like these moves were designed with a resisting opponent in mind right and so i don't need someone to help if anything i need them acting like naturally like defending but at the speed that i'm moving as well right so if i'm moving at a 10 percent pace they can defend but at a 10 percent pace and then that'll give a realistic demonstration so same thing here when i uh, go here i like her sitting up right because that's showing me the position i'm about to face and i go okay i need her on her back so i do this and she's going to start to sit up and that gives me time to get that and then she can go there and i'm actually going to sit right and then she can do her part right and so it becomes a, a art and then when you pick a partner um, it's good to have a partner that sinks with you, right? Has a good pace. Uh, this is the same in Muay Thai too, right, Arsenio? Where you have certain yep. partners that you like to go with because they hold at the pace that you like them to hold at, and you know the pace that they like to go at, and you can you sync with each other, right? And sometimes it takes a little practice to sync up with somebody, and if we mix up the partners, uh, you can still sync up, but it's going to take a little adjusting, right? Because they don't know how the pace you like to go and vice versa. Um, so same thing here when we're practicing the moves. Try to give a realistic uh, response and movements and resistance, but not defending them and not helping them too much either, right? So that's going to be an art. That's something that uh, there's no perfect way. You got to feel out your partner and, and see what they like, what works for them, and then vice versa. They got to do the same thing with you. You got to help each other win, right? Um, I like what Dwayne says: help your partner succeed, right? So help your partner to to succeed. That doesn't mean help them do the move. It just means help them get it right, you know. Um, so the next defense, this one is if she didn't get those grips, right? Maybe you didn't sit up fast enough to get your grips. The person sat and they put the foot over the hip that's going to prevent you from getting up right so i'm here uh, yep i'm here i sit down boom, and i got my foot into the hip here and i'm going to lay off to the side so don't worry about the foot grip right because she's the she's the one working the move right now so what she's going to have to do she can't get up she can't get over my knee uh she needs to get over my foot so she's going to use her hand to push it off her hip Use your other hand. I told her to use this one because now the next thing she's going to do is scoot over and sit on the other side. And that allows her to keep her hand on my foot until her butt got to the other side. Uh, from here, my knee's still in the way. So what she's going to do is she's going to scoot more that way. And now she can throw this leg over my knee and pull herself to mount. Just like that. And I noticed earlier, you guys were unsure about this knee. You can put this knee right over their arms. So pin your knee to the mat. And now my arm strap, right? And then you can go for whatever you want there. A lot of times you can turn that into a mounted triangle uh, just because this arm's gonna end up out of the way. The other arm's gonna end up in. So we're going in. You can get the grip if you want, just don't fork it. Sit and put your foot on the hip. So now she's gonna push that down, pop to the other side. Scoot a little so she can throw her leg over and then pull yourself down. See my arms are there. Any questions on that one? 
No, uh, Let's try real that. quick. That 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 um, the knee that she's trying to get over. That leg is not trapped, right? It's not like a half guard type of position at all. No, it's not so trapped. She, she can, so she could just. Yeah, just once she's out. able to, so it helps to scoot to their side a little bit, so you can throw your leg over easier. Space. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna try to butterfly hook it. I'm gonna try to do different things to stop her from stepping over. So the closer right. you are to their head, the easier it is to step over. To swing that leg over. Yeah. Okay. Just swing it over. So, so I'm looking to get this leg out. Yep. Here and hop to the other side. Good. Right. Now you're gonna scoot close. Now you can get your grips right. Throw your right leg over, and then do the mount. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I want to be here. 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 Yep, yeah, just throw your leg over. Got it. <laughs> All right. So let's go into um, another type of leg lock. We'll do the knee bar. Uh, we saw one way to do it, which was back stepping. Right? I could back step into this knee bar. Uh, we're going to do another way. So back stepping from here, you step this, right? We're going to do a different way uh, to get the knee bar. Uh, but we end up in the same position. Okay? So she's down. I'm going to come under her leg. Like I'm going to do maybe a two hand under pass or under over pass. I'm actually going to put my hand on top of the other knee. What I'm trying to do is pull on this. My hand is uh, above her knee, right? And this is pushing the other knee. My goal is to shoot my inside knee uh, right across her hip line, like I'm going to spin around and look the other way. My foot can stay stuck or I can take it out, whatever's more comfortable for you. So I go here, shoot my knee through. Right now, it looks a lot like the other position. This leg, lay down. Okay. If I want this leg out, I can, and I lay back. Remember, foot on the bottom. Now you're here, and I lay back. So, I enter here, push down, I pummel my underhook, and I post on the other knee, mainly to keep that out of my way. When I see the space, I spin. My foot is hooking in her hip. And then this one is curling by her butt. Hook at the knee, lay back with that, or take it out. And okay, let's try that. That's a knee bar. Is that legal for white belts in competition? No. <laughs> <laughs> so for here, Ask knowingly. <laughs> so, on the bottom, right? so I want to be. <laughs> I'm having a under. <laughs> Remember, you got an underhook. The leg. Underhook the leg. Underhook. I'll show it again. Oh, underhook oh. his left leg. Nope. Your right arm. Right arm underhook. On his left leg. Yep. Underhook that one. Oh, nope. oh the other way. <laughs> Can you see? Yes, yeah. That's mine. Push the other knee out of the way. Yeah. Now my inside knee shoots through. And I sit. So I have to step through. I am getting all confused here. So so I got this. Yeah. Now shoot your knee through. 
Don't nope. step. <laughs> no. So look, if I go like this, she kicks my butt. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't step over like that. You gotta, you gotta shoot through. Oh, yeah. You see the crown? Mm -hmm. Yep. Shoot the through, but don't hit the nuts. Yep. Sit down. Yep. It's yep. There you go. That's it. We did. We did that yesterday, right? Now we're there. So yeah, stay close to here. And then, but this foot stays on the hip. Yeah, or you can yep. take it out, and at that point, you can take it out. Yeah, but you want your knee in, his, in your belly. You want his knee on his still too far yeah. away. Yeah, you need, remember you need to keep your hip really close to the hip. There? Your belly has to be then. There? The reason he doesn't feel it is because his knee is pointed towards his head and you're laying off to the side. Remember, just like the arm bar, the elbow's in your stomach, right? His knee was not in your stomach. It was pointed off to the side. Okay, so, so I'm here. I push this one away. I underhook this one. This one here and then... And sit straight sit. down. Sit down. Oh, don't take your nope. foot up. <laughs> when you're stepping over, you're creating way too much space. Okay, so I push this one to the last side. Push this one. Sit down very close to the knee. Yeah, you're going through and it's sit very sit close. Down. Yeah, there it is. Go sit down. Sit. It's, sit down. There you go. Bam. Boom. Perfect. That's good. Right there. Now you lay back and hip in. Hip in like an elbow. Close your legs together. Yeah, I feel like you're too far off the side. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Remember what we were doing yesterday, where you were sitting close to his hip and laying next to him, not way no. off. Yeah, but you're not flexible enough, man. Well, then I'll tap earlier. Yeah, okay. See, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. This is why he tunes in every day. <laughs> remember, and you remember you got to hug the leg. Like, all the details from yesterday. Nothing's different. You know what I mean? So. It's just you're not, you're just dragging it in a different position, that's all. It's just a different entry. entry everything, right. everything else is the same, okay. right? So this is something you guys want to drill, right? That's why we're doing this. So you're going to keep drilling it and then uh, get better at it. So with that one, this is one that you want to go back to and review it. No, underneath. Oh, no. Yep, Wait. the other way. From the inside, from the inside. From the inside, and then hold outward. Yep. Now, then, yeah, it just becomes. Yep. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> All right, go ahead. That's, that's what you want to do. You just don't want to hit him in, in the wrong spot, right? So. Think of like rotating around his leg. Right. Yeah. Your foot's going to yep. follow your knee. Yep. Yep. Perfect. perfect. Yep. There you go. And perfect. make sure you get a good squeeze with your knees. And hug the leg. Go closer to his head. There you go. Love the leg. Wait, do I, can I, do I have to take this leg out? You can, but you don't have to. Okay. But you, he now scoot, has to be in your Now scoot head. close. Yep. So when Rita says the knee, that's good. When Rita says the knee has to be by the belly, what she's really saying is you got to sit close to the hip. Right here. Oh, okay. So you sit way out here. Right? right? Her knee is by my groin. Right. But if I sit close to her hip, now look where the knee is. Bend your leg. Bend your leg. See where the knee is now? 
right? right? But if I'm out here, I'm not gonna knee barber, I'm gonna miss the knee. I can't get it, and she's picking me up. But you have to sit by the hip. Okay. Yep. So keep the hip close to this. Right. Okay. Same thing with the arm bar now, right? Let's use that lesson for the arm bar. We don't want to lay back. We want to sit under the shoulder. That's the hip, right? So if you sit right. under the shoulder, now the elbow's by the belly button, right? Right. Yeah, that's the mistake that I made with my arm bar. So I'm too far away. Yeah, this common. Um, so now let's do toe hold. So this time your head's going up. So this one I'm going to show. This this one I show more as an example because it makes a lot more sense for the toe hold of what the moving parts are. It's not necessarily the setup I recommend. So she has guard on me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step up, okay, and I'm going to pull her knee towards my belly button. You see it shifts her hips, kind of like she wants to do a sitting sweep, right? From here, my I use these fingers. I'm gonna go right above the toe line, the same part that my armpit was covering when I did the ankle lock. This hand I'm gonna put on my own knee, okay? And I'm gonna push her foot over my arm until my hand can grab my foot, okay? So now she's ready to tap. My next movement, I do two things. So my elbow comes towards my shoulder like this, right? essentially pulling her heel towards my shoulder. And this hand is pushing towards her butt, okay? So I pull my elbow towards my shoulder and push the toes towards her butt, okay? So, so this is a, really a defense for a scissor feet. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay. So let's practice that. It just looks like a scissor sweep. It's not, it's not a good defense. Because if the person is doing a scissor sweep properly, you're not going to be able to do this. I guess you, you see that. But, but if someone stalls in that transition from the top of the leg to the bottom, to the hamstring, would that give you time to catch that? No, because the foot's way down by your hip. Right? So it's not... Remember when I'm doing this, I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up to make a shelf for the leg to slide down. So you're the one setting it up. Right, and the reality is I'm giving my back when I do this. That's why I said it's not the setup I recommend. It's just the way I like to teach it so you can understand the mechanics of the toe hold. Look here. If I go like this, for even better example, yeah. Let's go right back here. Okay. So if I go like this, right? Let's get my back. So it's not a good defense for a scissor sweep because I'm giving my back too. The idea of this is just to teach you the mechanics of a toe hold. You're probably not going to get a toe hold this way on an active skilled opponent. So I'm here. No, I'm here. He he puts his he rests his leg here. Correct? You're gonna hold the toes. Here, let me show it again. So look. I'm stepping up, I pull the knee and I hold the toes. Put my hand on my own leg and I push until I can grab my forearm. Now I can finish the toe hold. Because you're, you're not doing it the way I said. You got to put your hand on your knee. This one. Yeah. This one. I need you. Huh? Okay, step by step. It's important the order that I show is super important. I step up, I hold the toes, right? Her knee is pointing that way because I pulled it, okay? Now I put my hand on my knee and I'm gonna slide her foot down my leg over my own hand until I can grab my own forearm. So it feels like a Kimura, 
right? And now I pull my elbow to, up towards the ceiling and I push the toes down towards the butt. So. Yeah, go ahead. So you're pushing, but you're not pulling your elbow. Uh, you will feel it in your knee if your body doesn't turn with it, because that's where it's going to translate the energy to. Right, right there? Yeah, I feel it, but it's more. Yeah. So, so this, it's like a Kimura, basically. What's that? It's kind of a Kimura move. Uh, the grip is the same. Yeah. And you're pointing the toes towards the floor, or, or just butt? His butt. So, so let me do that again for one. So if you're here, you put your foot here. Okay, and then I want to turn, yeah. turn here and then. Okay. Makes sense? Uh, I, when he does it, I, I feel myself like turn. Right. You can turn to give in to the pressure, right? And that's where we'll talk about the defense. Where you really need to tie up the legs, right? So there's ways to tie up the legs that they're not gonna be able to get away. For example, the knee bar, right? If I do the knee bar position, I can set up the toe hold and do the same motion, right? So we're here, we did this yesterday, but let's say I do this last entry, right? So I go knee bar, but now I hold here, here, and I toe hold, right? right? So there's that. Um, I could do all kinds of leg impingments. I could do the um, leg lock position that we're doing today. Oh, wait, this is the way. And then I go here, right? And I can do it there. Get this one into pressure. Get this one. This bone? Uh huh. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just, yeah, turn it towards my butt. Right, and have it going in. The same, the same. So it's really important to entangle the legs. So that's another reason why I was saying this entry is not so good. So look, if I do it right here, I step up, I get my toe here. All she got to do is keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, and I lose it, right? Yeah. Right. And then I'm going to single. The next thing she can do to actually make me totally let go, after she does about a half of the twist, she puts in my elbow with her other foot. Okay. So that's why you need to entangle the legs to prevent any of the spinning, right? Any of the spinning. And there's really, I'm assuming there's no way to trap her or prevent her from rolling in that same direction? That's the leg, that's what the leg entanglement is. If I go here, she's not going to roll. Try to roll. I can, uh, she I can't can roll. Myself. And I can toe hold it, right? Yes. If I do the, the one we just did, she can't roll, right? You need the leg entanglement added, right? That's another reason why you don't do it the way that I was showing it. That was just so you learn the hand position, right? Because if I add all the leg stuff, you'll be too confused about the arm stuff, right? So this makes sense, but we know she can get away. So you don't want to do it there if someone's open guard, unless you just want to freak them out, because all they have to do is roll to get away. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we have straight ankle lock. We did the knee bar again with a different entry, and we did the toe hold. And you can do any of the leg entanglements. So there's a bunch of positions. We're not gonna have time to go over right now, but we already did uh, the one from the knee bar, right? Which isn't really an entanglement per se, but it's a knee bar position. We can do a toe hold from there. We can do it from the Ashigarami, uh, which is where we did the straight ankle lock, right? You could do a toe hold from there. Pretty much any knee bar position, you could turn that into a toe hold. The ankle lock, you can usually turn into a toe hold of some sort. Heel hook, you can usually turn into a toe hold. So uh, 
The idea is don't reap the leg if you're not allowed, and then to see what you have there. Always making sure your feet also are safe, right? If you're going for leg locks, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, they can go for leg locks on you too, right? So it's really important that your feet are safe before you try to attack this. Uh, any questions on any of that? Well, that leads me to something I saw her do yesterday, briefly, really quick, when um, she was demonstrating this the ankle sweep from you lifting her up out of guard. Okay. And she, she transitioned into what seemed to be she was starting an angle lock on you. Yeah. That's uh I, I just want to make sure I wasn't seeing something that I wasn't seeing. Yeah. So uh go guard. So if someone stands up out of your guard, this is the one sweep I like let people get on me all the time because I know not in training usually, but in the real like tournament competition, what I would end up doing. So if I stand up, she performs any, so instead of leaning over where I could get to a Minagi, I tend to be more upright where I could get double ankle swept, right? It's really easy to throw my legs over and attack a heel hook or a straight ankle lock or a toe hold. So, because when you do that sweep, your legs are dangling over them. And, and unless you pull them back while they're falling, there's a big chance your legs are gonna get tangled up. Uh, same thing with the tripod sweep. That's why it's really important to pull the legs in or come up right away to your knees before there's any type of uh, leg lock entanglements. So yeah, that was a good, uh, good catch there because you can get caught. But, but likewise, it looked like both of you, both of you have your legs exposed to the other person. Uh, oh my gosh, he has all our mind. So we don't have time to get into too much of it, but uh, you want inside control, right? So if she sweeps me here, I have, looks like she has, right? Because her legs are inside mine, but actually I am inside her legs, right? It's very easy for me to attack these. She really has no foot locks on me. No, he got a better chance than I can make. Okay, my legs are under his armpits. I'm inside control, yep. right? Yep. I'm inside control, I right? I have all the control in here, right? Okay. Inside control, right? So it has to do with inside control and the knee line being inside past your hip line. Uh, which we, we don't have, like I said, we don't have time to go over a lot of that. There's a lot that goes into that, but that's essentially the philosophy behind it, right? Where the knee, her knees are, uh, who has the inside control. It's like pummeling, right? Arm, um, hand fighting. I want inside control all the time. I'm not giving her inside control. Okay. I'm always inside. <laughs> Inside control. And uh, same thing with the legs. It's like leg pummeling, right? <laughs> yeah, we did that pummeling, remember? Yeah. Uh, hand over. It's the same thing with your feet. You pummel, right? Oh. And so when you see two guys sitting, sit, they both hold guard. They're both, uh, just your feet. They're both trying to get the inside control here. The inside I said, don't use your hands. And they're trying to get the inside <laughs> control, right? Because if they can get the inside, now she has the leg lock opportunities, right? If she just scoots in, throws this leg over my hip, where is she, right? She's at the ankle lock, but she had the inside control. I wouldn't have been able to do that from here. From here, I can't do that, right? She can do it. Pretty much pick a side. Yeah, she can do either way too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important to practice that as well, especially as 
to get closer to purple for sure. But purple. even a blue belt, you know, that position's good for a straight ankle lock. So the sooner you start working on that and being familiar with that, the better off you're going to be as well. You know, and then the way that we train here is, you know, there's not really any, um, you, you know, no restrictions really. Like a higher belt is going to work leg locks with the lower belt. Of course, they're going to be careful. And the lower belts are welcome to do the leg locks on the higher belts. It's good to discuss ahead of time. So, hey, do you mind if I do some foot locks? Right? <laughs> maybe you will, maybe you won't. Um, but it's good that you practice it, you know, because we're all going to be higher belts one day. And higher belts, it's expected that you would know it already. And if you're just starting to learn it, when you got that higher belt, you're way behind. You know, you're way right. behind. Especially with, with a lot of schools now, a lot of them only focus, especially Nogi schools, are only focusing on the leg locks, which isn't necessarily the best thing they could be doing, right? They should be focusing on their entire game, but a lot of them are just doing the leg locks. So you get this guy who's not even uh, wearing a belt yet because he does no gi, and he knows leg locks really good. And then he, you know, gets a leg lock on a blue belt that hasn't been training him because he was a white belt. And then they get surprised, you know. So it's important to start learning it right away. Just look at it as another part of jiu-jitsu. It might not be your game, but triangles might not be your game, right? You still got to know how to defend it, right? Right. I might not do triangles, but I got to know how to defend triangles. I might not do... Uh, key locks. I got to know how to defend key locks, you know, because people are going to do it. I might not know, I might not be good at straight ankle locks, but I got to know how to defend it. Same thing. So that's not the mentality you got to have. You know, it's your game it can be whatever you want it to be. But you got to know how to defend everybody's game. That's why it's good to roll with everybody too, not just one person, because one person, they have a game that, you know, you're going to get used to. Once you get used to it, you want to start rolling with other people so you can learn how to beat their game, right? Another reason to go with higher belts, because, you know, just because you're going with a lower belt, like I see some guys, they always roll with the same person, and usually they're rolling with people they can beat, you know? And that isn't good for their game, right? Because now you're not learning how to defend against usually a higher belt, someone that actually knows what they're doing, you know, but, uh, and then same thing, don't only roll with higher belts, you need the unpredictableness of a lower belt. There's also lower belts that are improving, right, and before you know it, they're going to be better than you because you haven't been rolling with them, and meanwhile, they're getting good, you know, when you thought, oh, they're a lower belt, I'm not going to roll with them, you know, no, you got to roll with everything, and that, that's the ones you're going to practice your offense on, the lower belts, you know. And the higher belts, they're the ones you're going to practice your defense on. You know, and then you got people that are right around your own skill level. Those are the ones where it's going to be 50-50 every day. You never know what's going to happen. They might get you. You might get them, right? They might tap you three times. You might tap them three times. Who knows? You know, you might go one for one. And, uh, but that's like your measuring stick or maybe like your motivation, like, hey, can I get better than this person faster than they get better, right? Uh, where everybody else is either they're your offense practice or your defense practice. And then you got that one person that you're kind of neck and neck with all the time. So you got to have all three types of person, you know. So let's see, tomorrow's Friday. We can continue with the leg locks unless you guys come up with something else you want to go over. We can continue with the leg locks and some defense. I haven't gone over heel hook yet. Uh, I don't mind going over heel hook, but it is a little more dangerous. Um, so it's definitely something that I want to be teaching you versus you finding out somewhere else. That way I know that you're hearing the right things, you know. Um, other than that, like I said, if you have any questions, we can work on it tomorrow. No, I, I, I think that's, uh, Arsenio, unless you have any objections, I'm good with that. Cool. Yeah, no, I agree, man. Whatever it takes to keep you safe. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No streets are dangerous. <laughs> I'm telling you, whatever it takes to keep you safe. That neighborhood. <laughs> that neighborhood, man. Hey, yeah. uh, but 